kaboom and welcome to the signature spell bomb my name is chad and i'll be your host the signature spell bomb is your source for oathbreaker content if you're interested in the oathbreaker format please check out the link in the description or you can find more information on the subreddit today's episode of the oath breakdown will be a 20 dollars deck tech all of our decks on the channel are built with a clear focus in mind, making them a power level of 5 to 7. This is to introduce new players to the format and to create fun and exciting games. We will create an extra video in the future explaining power levels. If you like what we do on the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out. If you're also interested, we have merchandise in the description so you can show your signature spell bomb pride. Today's deck is a Vraska the Swarm Eminences deck tech with Inspiring Call as our signature spell. Vraska, the Queen of the Bad Touch, is a Death Touch Tribal Commander Planeswalker. For 2 and 2 hybrid Gilgari mana, she's a 5 loyalty Planeswalker that reads, Whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker, put a 1-1 counter on that creature. For minus two loyalty, you can create a 1-1 black assassin creature token with death touch, and whenever that creature deals combat damage to a planeswalker, you destroy that planeswalker. Her first ability is excellent for pupping up our small creatures, and her second ability helps us deal with pesky planeswalkers. Inspiring Call, our signature spell, is a two and one green mana instant spell that reads draw a card for each creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it and those creatures gain indestructibility till end of turn. This spell is amazing for this deck as it guarantees us some card advantage and helps to protect our tiny army. So what's the plan of the deck? We are going to swing with an army of tiny death touch creatures and we're going to win the game by swarming our opponents out. Now let's get into the breakdown. In our episodes, we like to break the deck down and build it back up. Let's start with the ramp. The ramp in our deck is relatively simple because we're running a lot of 1 and 2 mana creature spells. Let's start with Leyline Prowler. This Nightmare Beast creature that's a 2-3 has Death Touch, Lifelink, and be tapped for 1 mana of any color. Next, we have Rishkar Pima Renegade for 2 and a green. It's a legendary elf druid creature that's a 2-2 that reads... Whenever Rishkar Pina Remigade enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one -one counters on up to each of up to two target creatures, and each creature you control with a counter on it has tap add green mana to your mana pool. Jang Wiangu Wildcrafter does a very similar thing. Each creature you control has tap add one counter, and it has add one mana of any color to your pool. If you minus one loyalty of Jang, you get to put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. Now that we've gone through that, let's talk about our card advantage package. First off, we have Thorn of the Black Rose, a 3 and a black human assassin creature that's a 1-3. She has Death Touch, and when she enters the battlefield, we become the Monarch. The Monarch provides us with some extra value, since our opponents are going to have trouble tr uh, blocking our creatures, and it won't be too hard for us to get it back pretty often. Winding Way is a sorcery for one and a green that lets us choose creature or land. We reveal the top four cards of our library, put the cards of the chosen type into our hand, and the rest into the graveyard. Since we're running 29 creatures in the deck, this can sometimes get us a whole new hand of cards. Falmire Knight costs us one black and is a 1-1 death touch creature, but its adventure spell, Profane Insight, costs two and a black and can get us a free card if we're willing to lose one life. Armorcraft Judge is a 3 and a green cost 3-3 three, three elf artificer that when it enters the battlefield will draw a card for each creature we have that has a 1-1 one, one counter on it, which is excellent value for our deck. Shamanic Revelation for 3 and 2 green is a sorcery spell that draws us a card for each creature we control, and then for each creature with 4 power or greater we're going to gain 4 life, which does happen with our deck's 1-1 one, one counters. Now that we've gone through that, let's talk about the swarm we're going to use to devour our enemies. Let's go through all the little guys in Veraska's swarm. Moss Viper is a 1-1 snake with death touch. Ruthless Ripper is a 1-1 human assassin with death touch and morph. If we reveal a black card from our hand, she gets turned face up and we can make a player lose to life. That shock is really good in the late game. Hired Poisoner is a 1-1 human assassin with death touch. 
Vampire of the Dire Moon is a 1-1 Vampire with Death Touch and Life Link. Narwood Dryad is a 1-1 Dryad Horror with Death Touch and Delirium. If we have four more card types in our graveyard, she becomes a 3-3. Norma Renegade is a 1-2 Elf Warrior with Death Touch, and when it enters the battlefield, it can have a 1-1 counter on it if another permanent we controlled left the battlefield this turn. That extra 1-1 counter can come in handy with some of our ramp cards. Ambush Viper is a 2-1 Snake with Flash and Death Touch. Thornwield Archer is a 2-1 Reach Death Touch creature that helps us block some flyers. Deadly Recluse fills a similar role as a 1-2 Spider with Reach and Death Touch. Ranch the Drats provides us with some evasion with its Skulk ability and Death Touch and is a 1-1 Zombie Rat. Pitiless Gorgon is a 2-2 Death Touch Gorgon creature. Vampire Nighthawk is a 2-3 Vampire Shaman with Flying, Death Touch, and Life Link. That little bit of Life Link can help keep us in the late game. Bone Picker is a 3-2 bird that can cost 3 less to cast if a creature died this turn that has Flying and Death Touch. Most of the time we're going to be able to play Bone Picker for 1 black mana. Thrill Kill Assassin is a 1-2 Human Assassin with Death Touch and Unleash. When it enters the battlefield, we can either have it as a 1-2 or as a 2-3 if we're willing to put a 1-1 counter on it and have it lose the ability to block. Since our deck is very aggressive, we're most likely going to take that 1-1 counter in most games. Poison Titch Archer is a 2-3 Elf Archer with Reach and Death Touch, and whenever a creature dies, each opponent loses one life. This ability is an alternate win condition for the deck, as we are going to be causing a lot of creatures to die throughout the course of the game. We do have other ways in our deck tech to capitalize on that I will address later. Now let's get into supporting the Swarm. How do we keep all our little buddies moving? First off, we have some cards that have a focus on our 1-1 counter strategy. Polybright Druid is a 1-1 Elf Druid that when it enters the battlefield, we can either put a 1-1 counter on a creature or proliferate. Evolution Sage is a 3-2 Elf Druid that whenever we play a land, we can proliferate. Corpse Jack Menace is a 4-4 Fungus, and if one or more 1-1 counters would be put on a creature we control, we put twice that many counters on instead, which is a very big boon for us. Let's talk about some of the other value cards we have to support the Swarm. Wasteland Viper is a 1-2 Snake with Death Touch, and Blood Rush, which is a nice little pump spell or combat trick in a pinch. Isereth the Awakener is a Human Wizard, 3-3, Death Touch. Whenever Isareth the Awakener attacks, you may pay X. When you do, you return to our creature with converted mana cost of X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with a corpse count on it. If that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. And this is an excellent way for us to get back any of our key creatures or to just keep us in the late game. We have Find and Finality, which serves two purposes for us. Find allows us to return two target creature cards from our graveyard to our hand at sorcery speed. And Finality at sorcery speed allows us to put two 1-1 counters on a creature we control. And then all creatures get minus four, minus four until the end of turn. Find helps us get back what we need, and Finality makes sure things stay out of our way. Speaking of keeping things out of our way, our next section is about clearing the way for our deck to win. Some basic removal we have is Nature's Way and Rabid Bite. Both cards allow us to use the bite mechanic to kill our creature's opponents since all of our creatures have Death Touch. Alvin Wall Tracker, a 1-1 Human Shaman, takes us to the next level by allowing us to pay one in a green to tap him and make one of our creatures fight an opponent's creatures. This reusable kill spell on a creature is wonderful. Selesnian Tactics for one in a green has Strive for a green for each creature we want it to target. Each creature we target with it will get plus one plus one and gain tap this creature, fight another target creature. This essentially in a lot of situations will work kind of like a board wipe for the deck and will allow us to kind of clear the way. Acidic Slime can help us deal with other hard to deal with permanents like artifacts, enchantments, or lands. It's a 2-2 death touch ooze. 
Golden Demise is a sorcery with Ascend. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn, and if we have the city's blessing, instead only creatures our opponents control get minus two, minus two. Again, just a board wipe to keep our little swarm getting through. Knight Incarnate which is a 3-4 elemental creature with death touch, does something similar. When it leaves the battlefield, all creatures get minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn, and it has a folk for 3 and a black. Now that we've talked about all the cards in the deck, let's get on to the cards that make the deck function. Here's the mana base. We're going to be running Cave of Temptation to help with our woman counter strategy, Gilgari Guildgate for minor fixing, 9 swamps, and 11 forests. Now that we've gone through every card in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our prices are calculated using TCG Player Optimized, looking for every card available at the best value at the time of recording. The average deck for Veraska the Swarm Eminence on e Oathbreaker Wreck is $72.07. Our deck is going to be much cheaper at $18.63 with shipping. If you want more information about our prices and how we arrived at that, there will be a link in the description. Our deck is built to be a 5 or 7, but there are definitely ways to improve it. Here are a couple of those ways. We suggest removing Cave of Temptation for Karn's Bastion, removing Gilgari Gilgate and posting in Hissing Quagmire, removing Hired Poisoner to put in a Gifted Aetherborn, and removing Acidic Slime to add an Orin Frostfang. Now that we've gone through the whole deck, we would love to hear your opinion. Please leave your comments in below, and we also would love to thank you for watching our video. If you want to see another video, please link, click on the link in our end card, and also all of our links to social media are here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm blowing up. <music>